Good afternoon everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Um, for those of you that haven't been here before, my name is Janice and I'm a family mix consultant. Um, today we're cooking dinner and we're making, I think it's bayo buns, um, and I'm going to use some leftover roast pork from tea for the filling. But the very first thing I need to do is make some brown sugar because I have literally a tablespoonful. Um, usually, um, when I make brown sugar, I use it all and rinse the container. Um, but I've, I haven't, this is a couple of times now that I've made it because I needed it and haven't rinsed the container. But it's still, it shouldn't matter, it's only um, sugar. Right, so I've got, I've found the recipe on Cookie Doo and it is. So eight ounces of sugar. Now you can use white sugar or um, raw sugar. At the moment I'm running a little bit behind so I've just grabbed the white sugar which was at the front. Oops, that's nine, doesn't matter, that's fine. Um, now I already knew there was nothing in there. Um, okay, next, and it says eight ounces of sugar, one ounce of molasses. Now, I don't want my brown sugar that dark, so I'll probably only put half an ounce of molasses. And a little bit more because we put more than eight ounces of sugar in. Okay. Next, next, give it a mix. And it is this easy to make your own brown sugar. Okay, we're gonna give it a scrape down. Just going to make sure that there's we haven't got big globs of molasses stuck to the side. Um, which we did have. Oops. And now we are going to put the lid back on. and give it another 20 seconds. Um, so you can put the full amount of molasses or you can put less again, depending on um, how rich you want your brown sugar. I like the half quantity of molasses. Um, I just, it's more, it, it's better for all the recipes. It's more, um, um, what is it? Um, versatile. Righty, yeah. So we're going to pop that in there. Ta-da. Now, and then it just says to pop in a airtight container and use as needed. So finish. I don't know where I've put the lid for this or down there. Now we're going to go to my week where I have saved the recipe for leftover roast bayo buns with hoisin sauce. And the first thing we're going to make is the hoisin sauce. Okay. So which is what we need the brown sugar for. Um, so it needs two garlic cloves. Righty, I just have to grab my knives. So I'm hoping I've got all my ingredients. I haven't got the roast meat out yet. 
and I'm hoping I've got all the ingredients um, that I need and I, I need to get the milk out. I haven't got the milk out yet either. Um, and all the utensils. is that brown sugar. And we're going to put the lid on. We'll give them a quick chop. That's five seconds deep five. Right, yeah. Next. Now we're going to add um, soy sauce. So I actually have got hoisin sauce in the fridge, but I like the idea of making my own sauce and my own. I've got um, store-bought hoisin sauce. We grew up on Kikamen soy sauce and then um, my husband was diagnosed with um, a gluten intolerance. So we moved across to this one, which is gluten free. And now I'm not fussed on the Kikaman one. Um, 150 grams of Smooth peanut butter. from a, a visit from one of my children because I do actually make my own peanut butter um, but if I was buying it I'd buy the crunchy. Okay. Um, 80 grams of dark brown sugar. grams of brown rice vinegar. Now I had no brown rice vinegar so I'm just using plain old brown vinegar. I have got white rice vinegar but um, um, 50 grams of sesame oil teaspoons of Chinese five spice powder so I had to go and buy some of this because I had none left okay this is a half teaspoon measure so what one two four 
quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Okay, just half a half, half. Two pinches of black pepper. Lid on, and oh, we'll have a look at that. Mm. Ten seconds, speed six. we need it and I think we're up to washing out the bowl mm. How do you? okay <coughs> I'm going to give that bowl a scrape out See, clean and dry the mixing bowl. So I'll be back once the, I've got a clean, dry mixing bowl ready to keep going, and I'll clear away some of this stuff. Okay. So what I did is I just did the universal wash, um, pre-wash, with no soap, just water, and then I gave it a rinse out. I haven't dried it. It just says to, and I rinsed the lid and given it a dry. Um, because we're going to continue on with the same recipe. Now that bowl is actually really clean. I mean, I wouldn't now make custard in it. I'd wash it properly if I was going to make custard in it. But since we're continuing on, um, that rinse out was good enough. So we'll go back to our recipe. Okay. And we're going to make the, the dough for the bao buns. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's B-A-O. So... It says to use 250 grams of strong white um, bread flour. I've said this before, I've got too many measuring cups from here, I've got to get rid of a few. I keep just transferring them over to a new bag of flour. Uh, while the, I had the pre-wash mode going, I put away um, any ingredients that I didn't think I was going to need again. Um, some of them I've kept just in case, but um, um, two teaspoons of dried instant yeast. teaspoon of baking powder oh that was half a teaspoon a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarb that lid's not on properly of caster sugar and half a teaspoon of fine sea salt. So I have got a half teaspoon measure here, we should use it. it up. 30 seconds on speed 10.
there. Now our spatula. And we're going to scrape down the sides with the bit. Add a tablespoon of milk. Um, so a tablespoon of milk, I'm going to measure in 20 grams. grams of water. Okay. Um, well, you're going to need it for a minute and a half. It says to greens a large bowl with groundnut oil, uh, but I'm just going to use my thermomat because we're going to tip out the dough, shape into a ball, then place into prepared um, bowl. Um, so. And then we're going to set it aside, cover with reusable wrap or cling film and leave it to prove in a warm place until doubled in size. So I'll be back in 30 to 40 minutes. Um, to continue, in the meantime, I'll just show you this. So, I've been working on my, um, it's very hot, it's just not long come out of the oven, on my jalapeno and cheddar sourdough, and this is the late, latest one, it is super light, um, feels really hollow, and I can't wait to cut into this one, we'll probably have a taste tonight for the tea. Oh yeah, I'll be back when, this, when we're ready to make our buns. Righto, it says to leave until it is doubled in size. So I'm not sure if that's doubled in size, but, um, because I didn't really eyeball it, but I think it is. Okay. Um, so 12 balls, approximately 30 grams each. I've got a my dough cutter here. Here it is. No, I've got it. I did have it. So we're going to do to do 12. I'll do, and it says they're approximately 30 grams each. going to give them all a quick way to see what how we went see that one's a bit bigger right yeah so let's do this scales okay what's that one way 33 37 40, 33, 36, 43, 41, 36, 35, 
38. Pretty good. 45, they're not, but they're all over 30, kilo, um, 30 grams. Right here. Um, now we're going to place on, it says place on two grease trays with enough space in between to double each in size. So cover lightly with oil, with oil reusable um, film or cling wrap. Don't know, are we supposed to, um, doesn't say to shape them, but I think we might. Oh yeah. So I'll grab a tray and we're going to leave these to rise again. And I'll just, um, I'll put them on a tray and then I'll toss this um, uh, thermomat over the top. says to cut 12 squares of baking paper so while these are rising I'll get myself some squares of baking paper we've got 12 8 centimeter square and we're going to roll each ball of dough into an oval 10 meters long oh yes yep I know what I'm doing. Right, yeah, I'll be back in half an hour once we've got once we've um, got these all risen. Okay, so that's that half hour timer up. Let's get rid of that and we'll go back to our bookmark. So I've got my paper here. And it says roll each um, I'll just put that um, dough mat away anyway into an oval approximately 10 centimetres long. Okay. I think that's right. Place a square of baking paper onto each oval like this and fold it in half. Okay. Righty eh? So I'm going to do half of these and then I'll continue with the other half. Um, no, actually, I'm going to do them all because it just says to place them back on the tray. Okay. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these. I'll be back because we're going to leave them to prove for another 10 to 15 minutes and then I think we're going to steam them yep and then we're going to steam them so we'll set the timer for 20 minutes because it'll probably take me five minutes to get them all going and I'll be back in 20 minutes So we're, we've only got a few seconds left, so I'll, I'll just um, clear that. Okay, and we'll go on with next. So next, we're going to place in um, 1,500 grams or a litre and a half of water. We've got nothing 
in there, the whiskey flavor. Nearly 800 grams of water. That's it, yep. Righty up. And we're going to put the simmering basket on top. It's just out of reach. And 12 minutes, 100 degrees. Um, so it says to grease the Varoma dish and tray, which I've already done. And then we're going to bring it to the boil. So I'll put the lid on and I'll be back once we're up to the boil. Righty eh? So we're going to place, oh, let's move that, that's warm. So we're going to put three um, of these buns in the oiled um, tray. So we'll do them in two batches. I'll just set them out like that. And then three up the top. Oops, that's a bit stuck together. Separate it out like that. We'll see how they go. We might put them in differently for the second one. So we're now. Um, so it just says to place three buns in both the dish and the tray, leaving space in between. Um, put it in position. Ten minutes, speed one. Right here, and I'll be back. And then we'll do the second lot, and then we make the third. Okay, so we've got, this is the first six that we've done. We've got these ones are yet to come out of the Varoma and I'll put them on here. I've discarded the water, so I'm, I'm just doing this quickly so that these, because these are still warm. And now we're going to place a garlic clove. Now I've, I've, I haven't done anything, I've just tipped the water out. And I've got two garlic cloves. Um, two spring onions and I've chopped it up a bit more than I probably needed to because I couldn't remember what the recipe said. 20 grams of soy sauce. Thirty grams of sesame oil. on and we're going to give that a blitz. Five seconds, feed five. says to scrape down the sides so the um, that spring onion is still in fairly big pieces let's see if I can get some out and now we're going to add it says um, three to four hundred grams of leftover roast chicken, roast lamb, pork or beef cut into pieces. Now I don't know if this is going to shred it, so I, I have cut it into largest chunks, but I thought I can just give it a, um, 
if at the end of it, if it's too chunky, I can just give it a bit of a mix up. So it said 300 to 400, so that was 321. And half the soy, hoisin sauce. So this is the one we made earlier. on. Now it's 10 minutes, 90 degrees. I'm um, speed one with the blade in reverse. So I will pull these out. I'll just show you this. Open up, you take the paper out. Oh, hang on, I should have done that up there. You take the paper out to use them. But I'm going to leave it in there for now. I'll be back when it's time to give it all a taste. Righty-o. Righty-o. So let's have a look and we'll see if that's shredded. Oh, look at that. I'm going to give it, it is a bit chunky. So I'm just going to, see it's got big pieces in there. So I'm just going to give it a, um, a quick, Says to serve with spring onions, um, cucumber, sliced red chilli, fresh coriander and sesame seeds. So I've got, you can't see that can you? I've got some cucumber and some spring onions. Righty -o. So let's do this, let's go 10 seconds, speed in reverse. I just want to shred it up a bit. I'll have a look and see what that looks like. Oh, look at that. I might have over shredded it. Oh, yeah, let's have a taste. Still a few big bits in there. Okay. This I just want you to know this smells divine. Buns are quite chewy, like not rubbery, but tending towards that meat is delicious. Mm. Mm. Um, I feel these could have been a bit better if they had been let rise a bit more, but I just followed the um, recipe the times on the recipe, so anyway. I'll call the hordes for tea now. Um, thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, could you please give it a thumbs up, pop over to my channel and subscribe, and I really hope I'll see you next time.